they hired an interesting architect that no one ever heard of. His name is Ragnar Quayle, and he was out of Pasadena. He was a movie star. Well, he wasn't a movie star, but he was in the movies. He was a skier, actually, and one of the Fox executives saw him at a ski resort and said, this guy's got matinee looks, we'll, we'll hire him. And he was in a few movies, nothing memorable, but he was a residential architect primarily, but this was a commission uh, very different than what he'd done before. His most famous things would have been the Wilshire Country Club, which he redid, and the Sahara uh, Casino in Las Vegas. And it, this doesn't look much like that either with the camels and, and et cetera. But this was a chance to really show he could do a modernist building. And so he built this beautiful area up on the, on the mountain here. And when Hughes execs and scientists got a look at it, they thought, well, this would be an inspiring kind of place to be able to look one side first to get a window, and then to be able to see the ocean on one side, the Santa Monica Mountains on the other, uh, just, just fantastic. And of course you had the Malibu movie colony, so you get to rub elbows with famous people, and it looked, it looked ideal. So in 1960 they acquired what was just then a shell. So the building, without the addition, but the original building was here, but it hadn't been subdivided into offices or laboratories, but it did have those beautiful parquet wood floors which everybody got, including the machinists. And one, one of my favorite shots is the machine shop because you were out in the middle of nowhere, really. You couldn't just call over to Culver City and say, make me an experimental piece of apparatus. So there they are with their lathes. I'm not sure how many, many lathes they really needed, but there's a row of them looking out the window and they're all in their bow ties and nice coats. And so even the technicians were, were uh, dressed for the occasion. But it was, it was casual, but it also was very personal. So each scientist got assigned a tech technician. So it was very one-on-one -on -one and, and you really had all the resources you could possibly ask for to, to build whatever great idea you had, whether it was the first working laser, which debuted here, I think in May of 1960. And, and Maiman had been at Culver City before he came out here. So the, the, the very best and brightest people you know, competed really to come out here. They wanted to be casual, but cool. They lived in houses by brand-named architects. They had casual clothing styles, but they also knew their art. And so they thought of themselves really as New York savvy, but California cool. <laughs>